Chunk 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 the goal of this lecture is to quickly get you up to speed with the extreme basics of using solvers within your own systems. I will introduce nonlinear and linear solvers, a few different types of them, and what they mean. This firmly falls within the modeling focus within this course. So as I mentioned, I'll give a brief introduction to different solver types, both linear and nonlinear, and then all subcategories within there. I will then show some of these solvers within OpenMDO and kind of walk you through part of the notebook that accompanies this lecture. So first, I will pull up a graphic that comes from the Engineering Design Optimization textbook by Key Martins and Andrew Ng. I will build this diagram out piece by piece, starting with the left-hand side. Here we have the idea of a solver, and they come in both linear and nonlinear flavors. First, I'll discuss the direct methods, which solve the linear system AU equals to B by factoring matrix A. You should never try to find the inverse of A to solve the system. Instead, you should use some kind of factorization to directly solve this. This is not an iterative method. This solves the system in one quote unquote step, but it may take a lot of computational time. A different type of solver than a direct one is an iterative solver. Iterative solvers loop through a system and converge. Instead of taking just one step, they take a certain amount of steps depending on how coupled or how complex your system is. Iterative solvers are also known as fixed point methods, a few of which are Jacobi, Gauss-Seidel, and successive over relaxation. Now these are within the linear subcategory, but they can also be nonlinear solvers as well. I'll get more into that later. But the whole idea of a, a fixed point iterative solver is that it simply runs part of the model, passes the results to another part, and then that part of the model passes any sort of coupled data back to the original part of the model. And this loop naturally occurs a few times, and it continues until the values that are being passed between the different subsystems stop changing. This is the idea of reaching convergence with fixed point iteration. I have here a kind of graphical representation of what that could look like. Uh, in this case, it's for an air structural wing design where there's information being passed between the aerodynamics and the structures. This comes from our understanding XDSM diagrams lecture. In addition to fixed point methods, there are also iterative methods known as Krylov subspace methods. These include conjugate gradient and GMRES. These methods search for an approximate solution from a Krylov subspace for the problem AU equals to B. I won't get much into the math or theory details here for Krylov subspace solvers, but they're very efficient for very large and sparse systems. An example where we use them is for obtaining the gradient information through a computational fluid dynamics or CFD solver. Now, let's jump into the nonlinear solvers. One example of a nonlinear solver is Newton's method, and the figure here shows Newton's method plus a linear solver. This is because we need some gradient information to be able to use Newton's method. There's a fantastic video by one of my colleagues from the MDO lab that goes into detail about how Newton's method operates in 1D, 2D, and ND. I highly recommend you check it out, and I'll have a link in the description. Because Newton methods need derivative information, we have to use a linear solver. Now, besides Newton methods, there are also nonlinear variants of fixed point methods. So earlier I mentioned that you could use any one of the Jacobi, gauss seidel or successive over-relaxation methods for nonlinear systems, and it's true. So if you need to converge the nonlinear coupling within a system, you could simply pass information or data between the different subsystems until the data that's being passed does not change. Again, this is the idea of an iterative solver, where it runs successive subsystems within the model until it is converged. So we've very briefly gone through a few different types of linear and nonlinear solvers and what they mean. I highly recommend that you read section 3.6 in Engineering Design Optimization. It's very concise and is very focused on introducing the idea of solvers, giving an overview of them, and going into more detail about what this figure means. I will now just briefly show some of the outputs from the accompanying Python notebook associated with this lesson. I wanted to show a few different convergence histories for a simple model here, and to show you how different solvers converge the model differently. This might seem obvious, but I just wanted to highlight a few of the different changes that you can make that indeed are very problem dependent, but can help you understand what type of solver and settings to use within your model. If you're not seeing very quick convergence, maybe using the Aitken relaxation method with Gauss-Seidel would be helpful. Or if you're using a Newton method, perhaps adding a line search would help get you more robust results. I don't want to dive too much into this as the accompanying notebook goes into more detail about the different options used on the OpenMDO level for these. I simply wanted to introduce the idea that different solvers have different properties that are very problem dependent. The best solver setup for your system will vary, and there's also a trade-off between computational cost and robustness of the solver. And for the last part of this video, I will walk through a portion of the accompanying Python notebook. Here is some of the text write-up that goes into a little bit more detail about what I've been discussing through this lesson, but I want to focus on some of the examples using solvers in OpenMDAO. 
I have two examples in this notebook. The first deals with a seller problem, which is a kind of academic problem that shows a nonlinear coupled system. And the next is an electrical circuit problem. We're modeling a coupled system with an implicit component within it. But first, let's talk about the seller problem example and what I'm hoping to show. First, we simply set up one and two components and then the group that contains these components as well. But then the next few code blocks look at setting up the system and how we can solve it. First, we do it with no solver. And I add the N2 diagram being outputted here so you can take a look at what that looks like. Then we add a solver. Uh, we make sure that we actually resolve the coupling between these two disciplines and converge to a correct answer. Then here I just want to highlight that we're playing around with a few different options. First, we start with a nonlinear block gauss seidel solver. And then here I change it to using a kid relaxation with the same type of solver. But we continue on, and now I change to a Newton solver. Additionally, there are a few more examples of different options that you can use, see what kind of options are available in OpenMDO. The whole idea here is just to see, okay, this is how it converges for this specific problem when I use this solver. If I change the settings, this is how it could converge. I highly encourage you to do this with your own models, play around with the solver settings, see how robust and computationally efficient you can get convergence looking for your model. I also just show a few other options, like including a line search. In this case, we had an Armijo Goldstein line search, which sometimes helps with robustness for the Newton solver. Additionally, this notebook shows how to access the solve subsystems option that goes into the Newton solver. As mentioned in the text above in this notebook, the solve subsystems essentially does one iteration of nonlinear block gauss seidel before starting the Newton solver. This option helps your system start with pretty good guesses for the Newton solver. So I just wanted to briefly show some of the options that are available in OpenMDO for this seller problem example. We then move on to the circuit example. And here I'm just showing you that when you use a Newton solver, the initial guess that you supply is important. Here with these reasonable guesses, the Newton system converges and doesn't blow up. So we've introduced a few different types of solvers and how to use them within OpenMDAO. Again, solvers are necessary to resolve coupling within multidisciplinary systems. I cannot stress enough that the best solver setup is highly problem dependent. If you have any sort of computationally expensive multidisciplinary coupling, I highly suggest that you take the time to make sure that you're solving the system as efficiently as possible. This is just one of many lessons related to solvers, and I highly recommend that you check out some of the linked lectures in the description below for more information. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, please mash the like and subscribe buttons, and thank you very much for watching.